Hi, this is my first video to start with this series. The purpose of this series is trying to explore things in the digital image process. It might be a tool, might be math, might be troubleshooting, might be anything. This is not a tutorial, but it may help you to create a custom build for your own good. I may not cover everything, but I love to keep learning new stuff during the process. I hope you enjoy it too. In this video, I will divide into chapters. Each of the chapters has a link provided in the description below. Alright, let's start. This time I will do a breakdown of depth of field related tools in Nuke. The most popular ones are Z to Focus and PG Bokeh. But before that, I would like to explain the different types of depth map. The most common depth maps we use are depth distance and inverted depth. Depends on the render engine setting. In Nuke's scanline render, it always outputs inverted depth, which is closest value to the camera is 1, and the far value is 0. But the deep output is opposite, closest value is 0 and furthest value can be infinity, which is the reality measurement. In Z to Focus's math, it is called direct. It can use one divide by the depth value to convert to each other. In this video, I will use the direct depth for our test, so it will be easier to understand what happened. Let me show you the test setup I am going to use in this video. The setup will help us to understand how those depth of field works in those tools. You can see all these white dots in a line, they represent the highlight of the image. Then I set up a ramp as a depth map, zero value on the screen left, ramp up to 1000 on the screen right. Red line on every 100 units. Blue line on every 10 units. Green line has no value on it, just for the bouquet size comparison in every different setting. I have some render tests for these settings, so we can see how the value works in visual. Let's check out the different maximum settings first, the rest are using the same value. Maximum 50. Maximum 100. Maximum 200. Okay. Let's compare these three at focal distance at 500, so you can see the fall off start from focal distance, and stop at the distance around the maximum value. In maximum 50, the depth of field is 450 to 550. In maximum 100, the depth of field is 400 to 600. In maximum 200, the depth of field is 300 to 700. This is how maximum value works. Now, we move on to size setting. Do you know size value has a relationship with maximum? I am going to show you different size values under the maximum 100 setting, then I will explain the relationship between them. Size 1 Size 2 Size 5 Size 10 Size 50 Actually, we don't see much difference after the size value of 5. Let's try another size value. This time I set to lower than 1. Size 0.5 Size 0 0.2 This time we have a larger depth of field. Let me explain it at a focal distance of 500. When we have a maximum at 100, the depth of field is distance 500 plus and minus 100. When size is set to 0 0.5, then the depth of field is 300 to 700. 
So, here we can try to guess the relationship by the following equation. 1 divided by 0.5 and multiplied by 100. Let's check out another value to prove this. Size 0.2. We can see the range clearly here, so this time we look at distance 800. The depth of field stopped at 300, which is 500 units from distance 800. 1 divided by 0.2 is 5. 5 multiplied by 100 is 500. So this equation works. Look at the size value of 2 this time. Focal distance at 500, size at 2, maximum at 100. So the depth of field is plus and minus 50, which is 450 to 550. Same as the diagram shown here. That's why when the size value is up to 10 above, there has not much difference in terms of fall off. So if you have a large value of size, which means to focus and convolve are able to do the same thing but with faster process. I think depth of field knob in Z to focus is not an appropriate word. It is because the function of this knob is to keep the area stay sharp. I may not understand this wording so well, but this is the diagram I according to. So the depth of field in this chapter 1 only refer to Z to focus is not. Depth of field in Z to focus is pretty straightforward. Let's check out a render test. Depth of field set to 50, size as 1 and maximum as 100. Let's stop at 500 focal distances and check out how these values are applied. In this diagram, between 475 to 525 are in focus. The maximum and size value applied outside of this range. Which means when set depth of field to 50 and Z to focus, it will be divided by 2, then plus and minus the focal point. And the result is where the defocus starts. The depth of field and Z to focus is not accurate in optical physics. That's because the sharpest distance should be only at one point. All surrounding distances, technically are acceptable sharpness. The objects in this area should have slightly softness. Even though, Z to focus is still a good creative approach. It is because when matching the plate, some situations are unpredictable. And Z to focus provides a flexible setting for users to tweak the result. When mentioning PG Bokeh, the first thing that comes up to people's mind is deep support. Then is the processing speed. I don't know how well the 3D software works, but I tested the depth of field on Renderman and Arnold. It gives the same result, which means they are using the same algorithm. I think that is closer to real camera lens physics. And also that's why it takes a long processing speed. Here is a render test from PG Bokeh with f-stop 1.4, world scale with a millimeter unit. You may wonder why the falloff looks strange. I created a mechanic setup here, so it could be easier for you to understand. The setup works with the field of view, angle of view, focal distance. Let's check out the setup with PG Bokeh's render test. So actually, PG Bokeh's algorithm included angle of view calculation. If we flatten the camera frustum, then the focal lens will be bended by the angle of view correction. And that's why PG Bokeh's result is like this. Let's check out focal distance at 250. Outside of depth of field area, the bokeh will remain the same size. Let's flatten the camera frustum again to see the result. When changing the focal length and horizon aperture, the camera frustum will be changed too. And these changes will apply to depth of field. This is the result of focal length change. This is the result of horizon aperture change. So when the AOV gets narrow, you will get a larger depth of view. I mentioned in Z to focus, the depth of field is not correct in physics. So in PG Bokeh, you can't find any setting that allows you to have an area with fully sharpness. 
in optical physics, only has one point in focus, then the surrounding area starts with a slight softness to fully out of focus. And all resulted by aperture and FOV. Here are some settings of the camera, so show you why some lenses can get more blur on background and some are not. As I mentioned in this setup, bokeh will remain the same size if outside the depth of view. So this area can just apply the same bokeh value without any extra calculations. If the depth of field is large, then PG bokeh will take more processing steps to calculate every distance. This diagram shows you which part will take more time to calculate in Z to focus. And this diagram shows you which part of PG Bokeh will take more time to calculate. Don't forget PG Bokeh is also using more complicated math to calculate depth of field at the same time. Okay, when you are using Z to focus, there are two elements required. One is the Z to focus node. The other one is the depth map. You can't modify the code or math inside Z to focus. But you can modify the depth map data. As I said that before, Z to focus is still a good focus node, because it provides all the basic functions that you need. And it provided the maximum function for you to optimize the process. Depth map is linear data. So you can put the physical camera math on the depth map. There is a gizmo called optical Z to focus from Jed Smith. It can produce a result closer to PG Bokeh, just a slight difference. You can also check out his video here. If you just want something quick and simple, you can use power or exponent math to blend the depth value. Sometimes you might need this method to tweak the depth of field for creative reasons too. Okay. The video is up to here. I hope you get more ideas about the tools that we use daily. Even though you might not use Nuke now or later, the idea is always the same. Sometimes you just need a creative way to execute with the tools on your hand. Enjoy!